Octavius, however, would not stay there, but with Petronius went down from the hill. As for the lictors, Crassus bade them be gone. The first that met him were two half-blood Greeks who, leaping from their horses, made profound reverence to Crassus, and desired him, in Greek, to send some before him, who might see that Serena himself was coming towards them. His retinue disarmed, and not having so much as their wearing swords along with them. But Crassus answered, that if he had the least concern for his life, he would never have entrusted himself in their hands, but sent two brothers of the name of Roscius to inquire on what terms and in what numbers they should meet. The Serena, the Serena ordered immediately to be seized, and himself with his principal officers came up on horseback, and greeting him said, How is this then? A Roman commander is on foot, whilst I and my train are mounted. But Crassus replied that there was no error committed on either side, for they both met according to the custom of their own country. Serena told him that from that time there was a league between the king, his master, and the Romans, but that Crassus must go with him to the river to sign it. For you Romans, said he, they have not good memories for conditions. And so saying, reached out his hand to him. Crassus, therefore, gave order that one of his horses should be brought, but Serena told him there was no need. The king, my master, presents you with this. And immediately a horse with a golden bit was brought up to him and himself was forcibly put into the saddle by the grooms, who ran by the side and struck the horse to make the more haste. But Octavius running up, got hold of the bridle, and soon after one of the officers, Petronius, and the rest of the company came up, striving to stop the horse, and pulling back those who on both sides of him forced Crassus forward. And thus from pulling and thrusting one another, they came to a tumult, and soon after to blows. Octavius, drawing his sword, killed a groom of one of the barbarians, and one of them, getting behind Octavius, killed him. Petronius was not armed, but being struck on the breastplate, fell down from his horse, though without hurt. Crassus was killed by a Parthian, called Pomastrathes. Others say by a different man, and that Pomastrathes only cut off his head and right hand after he had fallen. But this is conjecture rather than certain knowledge, for those that were by had not leisure to observe particulars, and were either killed fighting about Crassus, or ran off at once to get their comrades on the hill. But the Parthians, coming up to them, and saying that Crassus had the punishment he justly deserved, and that Serena bade the rest come down from the hill without fear, some of them came down and surrendered themselves. Others were scattered. Up and down in the night, a very few of whom got safe home, and others the Arabians, beating through the country, hunted down and put to death, it is generally said that in all twenty thousand men were slain and ten thousand taken prisoners. Serena sent the head and hand of Crassus to Herodes, the king, into Armenia, but himself by his messenger scattering report that he was bringing Crassus alive to Seleucia, made a ridiculous procession which, by way of scorn, he called a triumph. For one Caius Pachianus, who of all the prisoners was most like Crassus, being put into a woman's dress of the fashion of the barbarians, and instructed to answer to the title of Crassus and Imperator, was brought sitting upon his horse, while before him went a parcel of trumpeters and lictors upon camels. Purses were hung at the end of the bundles of rods, 
and the heads of the slain fresh bleeding at the end of their axes. After them followed the solution singing women, repeating scurrilous and abusive songs upon the effeminacy and cowardliness of Crassus. This show was seen by everybody, but Serena, calling together the Senate of Seleucia, laid before them certain wanton books of the writings of Aristides, his Milesiaca. Neither, indeed, was this any forgery, for they had been found among the baggage of Rustius, and were a good subject to supply Serena with insulting remarks upon the Romans, who were not able, even in the time of war, to forget such writings and practices. But the people of Seleucia had reason to commend the wisdom of Aesop's fable of the wallet, seeing their general Serena carrying a bag full of loose Milesian stories before him, but keeping behind him a whole Parthian Sybaris and his many wagons full of concubines, like the vipers and asps people talk of, all the foremost and more visible parts fierce and terrible of spears and arrows and horsemen, but the rear terminating in loose women and castanets, music of the lute and midnight revelings. Rustius, indeed, is not to be excused, but the Parthians had forgot, when they mocked at the Milesian stories, that many of the royal line of their Arsadii had been born of Milesian and Ionian mistresses. Whilst these things were doing, Herodes had struck up a peace with the king of Armenia, and made a match between his son Pacorus and the king of Armenia's sister. Their feastings and entertainments in consequence were very sumptuous, and various Grecian compositions, suitable to the occasion, were recited before them. For Herodes was not ignorant of the Greek language and literature, and Artavasdes was so expert in it, that he wrote tragedies and orations and histories, some of which are still extant. When the head of Crassus was brought to the door, the tables were just taken away, and one Jason, a tragic actor, of the town of Trales, was singing the scene in the Bacca of Euripides concerning Agave. He was receiving much applause when Salasius, coming to the room, and having made obeisance to the king, threw down the head of Crassus into the midst of the company. And the Parthians receiving it with joy and acclamations, Salasius, by the king's command, was made to sit down while Jason handed over the costume of Pentheus to one of the dancers in the chorus, and taking up the head of Crassus, and acting the part of a bacchanae, in her frenzy, in a rapturous, impassioned manner, sang the lyric passages, We've hunted down a mighty chase today, and from the mountain bring the noble prey. to the great delight of all the company. But when the verses of the dialogue followed, What happy hand the glorious victim slew, I claim that honor to my courage due. Pomazathres, who happened to be there at the supper, started up and would have got the head into his own hands. For it is my due, said he, and no man's else. And the king was greatly pleased and gave presents, according to the custom of the Parthians, to them, and to Jason, the actor, a talent. Such was the burlesque that was played, they tell us, as the afterpiece to the tragedy of Crassus's expedition. But divine justice failed not to punish both Herodes for his cruelty, and Serena for his perjury. For Serena not long after was put to death by Herodes, out of mere envy to his glory, and Herodes himself, having lost his son Pacorus, who was beaten in a battle with the Romans, falling into a disease which turned to a dropsy, had Aconite given him by his second son, Phraates. But the poison working only upon the disease, and carrying away the dropsical matter with itself, the king began suddenly to recover so that Phraates at length was forced to take the shortest course 
and strangled him. Life of Crassus, end.